Daily Pink Slip. From a Cadillac that's really a Cavalier to a Yugo that's really a piece of shit, we're counting down the 10 worst selling car models of all time. Number 10, the Pontiac Aztec is going to be on everyone else's list and we're no different. This plastic clad assmobile has very little going for it. This commercial failure got its second 15 minutes of fame on Breaking Bad as Walter White's Nerdmobile, and eventually even he junked it. Also, someone thought it was a good idea to create this strange camping accessory. Hopefully you bought the car and the camper at the same time, because if you brought this Aztec home, you'd probably be sleeping in it that same night. Number 9. The Chevy Cavalier was a very economical sedan that never tried to be more than what it was, until Cadillac stepped in and decided to fuck everything up. They added a few Cadillac badges, leather seats, and called this thing the Cimarron. This car cost 12000 bucks in 1984. Eventually they did change the front of the car so it kind of looked more caddyish, but it was too late. GM had already laid a giant turd that still wafts through their engineering halls to this day. Number 8. Once in a while, a concept car makes it all the way to the production line. The Plymouth Prowler is a good example of this phenomenon. The retro styling was done well, but what asshole thought it would be a good idea to put a V6 in there? To add insult to injury, it only came with an automatic transmission. The Prowler was designed with exactly one customer in mind, a 59-year-old man who wears white New Balance tennis shoes and watches his cholesterol. Number 7. Alright, so I'm assuming you all know the DeLorean. It's easily the coolest car on this list. Aside from being immortalized as a time machine in Back to the Future, it just screams awesome. Gullwing doors, a stainless steel body that will never rust, and it just looks badass. So what happened? Well, it had a 2.8 liter V6 that was heavily restricted in the US, putting out only 130 horsepower. And it just didn't sell. John DeLorean was also caught trying to traffic a shitload of cocaine in an effort to save the company. He successfully defended himself by claiming effort. FBI entrapment, but his reputation was fucked after that, and DeLorean Motor Company went bankrupt. Number 6. Introducing the same old idea. Gee, I really wonder why Yugo went the way of lead paint. So the reason they even sold any of these mini abominations was the introductory price of about four grand. If you didn't change the timing belt every 40,000 miles, it would break, causing a catastrophic series of events that would grenade the engine. Nice. The US division folded in 1992, but they made these crap boxes overseas until 2008. The two doors Yugo, the four doors a Wego, but overall the car was a no-go. Number 5. The Ford Edsel, a name that immediately invokes feelings of failure and shame. It was a downright ugly car that looked like it was sucking on a lemon and nobody wanted it. This blunder cost Ford $350 million in 1960, which is about $2.8 billion in today's money. You know more than a few people got a pink slip over this one. They tried to innovate with a bunch of bullshit features. This push-button transmission looks a lot like the steering wheel of the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. And that's the best thing I can say about it. Number 4. It's easy to see why the Chevy SSR was an unmitigated disaster. It had weird bubbly pseudo-retro styling, a retractable hardtop, and a weak V8 for something that was supposed to be a hot rod. They eventually upped the power on the engine, but that wasn't enough to save the dismally low sales. After all that, it wasn't even suitable to be used as a truck. Its last hurrah was a brief appearance in the 2005 movie The Island. You don't remember? Yeah, me neither. Number 3. The AMC Pacer is the only car that came standard with a pocket protector in the glove compartment. Seriously though, it's an odd little vehicle. That rear bubble hatch and frog-like front didn't do it any favors, but the curves of this lady's ass may have sold a few. The Pacer's final moments in the sun were on the silver screen. It was the Mirthmobile in Wayne's World, and then it took center stage as the hamburger car from Good Burger. If you don't want one after learning all that, you never will. But then there's always the Gremlin. Number 2. The Tucker 48, also known as the Tucker Torpedo, was one man's attempt to carve a place for himself in the auto industry. The car itself is an Art Deco tour de force with aero styling and a distinctive Cyclops center headlight. Unfortunately, the car had more issues than Pete Rose getting into the Hall of Fame. During the public introduction, the car was so noisy that Preston Tucker instructed the band to play as loud as possible to mitigate the noise. They made a movie about this in 1988 called Tucker, the Man in His Dream. Jeff Bridges plays Tucker, and I highly recommend it, but the actual car was a piece of junk. Number 1. The Ford Pinto. They actually made this thing for nearly a decade, but everyone remembers the gas tank issue. If you got rear-ended, the thing could easily rupture and catch fire. This eventually led to a recall of over 1.5 million Pintos, the largest automotive recall at the time. Aside from that, the car is an extremely bland little hatchback with no power. Let's try and make up for it with pictures of pretty ladies. There, I feel better already. 
Hey guys, thanks for watching. We put up brand new videos every week, so hit that subscribe button and you won't miss a single one. And remember, if you watched this video at work and you still have a job, then you just dodged the Daily Pink Slip.